Hello and welcome to this lesson on process diagrams. If you get a process diagram come up in your test, you should count yourself as being very lucky as these are perhaps the easiest type of writing task one question to get. You'll be pleased to know that as ever we're using the same writing process again. Before we take a look at our first example question, let's have a look at some diagrams just to give you an idea of what you might be facing in the exam. So here's the first type of process diagram you might see. And as you can see, this is about the life cycle of the silkworm. Um, so this is a natural process. This is a diagram based on something from nature and it's cyclical in nature as in it will just keep repeating itself um, there's no clear start and finish um, it's a continuous process uh, the diagram is labeled so we've got lots of um, information um, that we can use and the there are arrows showing the direction of the process so that's a type of uh, natural cyclical diagram that you might be asked to analyze. You could also face something like this and this uh, diagram or flow chart is showing um, how bricks are produced and this is obviously a man-made process and it's linear in nature which means there's a clear start and a clear finish and again we've got arrows and labels giving us some extra information about different steps of the process. So you could be faced with something like that. You might also be faced with two pictures, um, as in this case. Here we've got cement and concrete production, um, and we've got two diagrams that we need to analyze. Um, but again, there are different steps to the two processes and there are labels um, that we can use to help us. Um, so the important thing is when you see a diagram like these uh, is not to be worried or confused because there is a specific method we can use to analyze these diagrams and write really good uh, answers to these questions. So let's take a look at our first example question and see exactly how it's done. So here is the first example question we're going to take a look at. And you can see the diagram there. And let's first read the opening question statement. And it reads, the diagram below shows the production and the processing of milk production for commercial sale. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay, so there's just one diagram here. Um, and as ever, we need to analyze the question and the diagram to make sure we understand it. Um, so let's just first look at the basic things. So the uh, title tells us that the diagram below shows the process of milk production and when we're looking at uh, diagrams like these we always want to try and identify the different steps of the process so what are the different stages of the process so that's what we should look for when we first analyze the diagram and here the first thing we've got is cows grazing. Then we've got a milking machine twice a day. Then refrigeration storage. Then a milk tanker daily delivery to dairy. Then we've got a dairy. And it, here, even if you don't know what a dairy is, you can guess from the picture. So often in these types of questions, in these types of diagrams and illustrations you'll be able to guess um, what a word means from the picture as in the case of da dairy here. A dairy is a factory that turns 
um, milk into different products. Um, so here it is producing cheese, cream and butter or it's going to pasteurize and package milk. And then the final step is that it is sent to supermarkets and shops. So uh, once we've clearly identified the different steps of the process, the next thing to do is ask ourselves five key questions. You can use these five key questions to identify the key features of any uh, process diagram or illustration and they are what happens at the start and finish of the process so at the start we've got cows grazing and at the end we've got milk on a supermarket shelf so we've got cows grazing which finally leads to uh, produce for sale um, next question is is it a natural or man-made process well, this is clearly a man-made process. Um, it's certainly not um, nature. Um, it's certainly not a natural process. We've got factories and lots of human involvement here. Is it cyclical or linear? So is it a continuous circular process that goes on and on? Or has it got a clear start and a clear finish? Here it's obviously linear, we've got a clear start and a clear finish. And how many different steps are there? Well, we've already identified that there are nine different stages. And finally, are any raw materials used in the process? The only raw materials we've got here really are uh, grass that the cows are grazing on. Um, so the, that's the only raw material that the diagram tells us. So it's important that we don't make up any extra information and that we only use the information from the illustration to answer the questions. Uh, if we start making up information or adding our own opinion, then we are not summarizing the information in the diagram and we'll lose marks for task achievement. Okay, so that is essentially how you analyze any process diagram or flowchart, and we're going to use that information to write our uh, overview paragraph in a moment. Before we get to the overview and details paragraphs, we're going to write the introduction in the same way. So here the opening statement reads, the diagram below shows the production and processing of milk production for commercial sale. So we can use direct synonyms to make it uh, read the following. The illustration below demonstrates how milk is processed and produced for retail purposes. So rather than the diagram, we've got the illustration. Um, instead of shows, we've got demonstrates. Um, instead of the production and processing of milk, we've changed the order of those words and use a different form of the words. So how milk is processed and produced. And for commercial sale comes to for retail purposes. So very simply, we've used direct synonyms again. Now we're going to write our overview paragraph and we're going to do that by using the answers to the key questions that we asked ourselves. So as a reminder, there they are at the bottom. And essentially what we need to do is to combine these answers into one or two, usually two sentences. So um, here I have written Overall, the process begins with cows grazing and ends with milk and dairy produce being sold in shops. It is a nine-stage linear man-made process. So there I've actually managed to include all um, of the answers of all five pieces of information. Um, if you only manage to include four, that would be fine. 
Um, but these answers enable us to write a really nice uh, overview of the process. So uh, I could have started with overall, it is a nine stage linear man made process. Uh, the process begins with, I could have done it that way round, and that would have been fine as well. Um, but we just need to combine those answers into uh, a nice overview paragraph. And that's essentially all you need to do for your overview paragraph. Um, it's a really fast and effective way to produce uh, a nice, concise overview paragraph there. Now we need to add our details paragraphs. And as normal, we need to write two details paragraphs. So how do we decide what we're going to write in each of the two paragraphs? Well, we're going to look at the diagram again and basically split it into two. We're going to find a convenient and logical place in the diagram um, where we can split it into two separate sections. Here, it seems logical to split the diagram um, uh, before and after the milk is delivered to the dairy. So that seems uh, a nice logical place to split the diagram and that will give us our two paragraphs. Now, how is the how are the details paragraphs different to the overview paragraph? Well, they're actually going to include in them the purpose of the different stages. So, the details paragraphs will tell us why these different stages happen. So, here's the first example. First of all, cows are allowed to graze on agricultural land so that they can produce milk. They are then milked twice a day by machinery and the milk is stored in a refrigerator to ensure that it stays fresh. A milk tanker then collects the milk and delivers the milk to a dairy where it can be processed further. And here's the second details paragraph. After this, the dairy converts the milk into either pasteurized and packaged milk so that it is safe and convenient for customers to use, or it is turned into other dairy products that can then be sold. Finally, the products are sent to supermarkets and shops in order to be sold to the public. Now, you might have noticed on reading this that we've used a variety of sequencing words. Um, whereas in the other types of visual data, the graphs, bar charts, and pie charts, you would we'd use linking words such as however, even though, whereas. Here, we're using um, cohesive devices, or sequencing words in this case, which are first of all, uh, they are then, then, after this, finally. They are sequencing words which um, tell the reader uh, when we're moving on to the next stage. And it makes it nice and logical to read and will be nice and clear for the examiner to understand. So it's obviously important not to use the same one over and over again. So we wouldn't say after this, after this, next, next, next. Um, we try and use a variety of them as we have here. Um, in another video, I will be giving you uh, a full list of different uh, sequencing words that you can use um, for such occasions. The second thing you need to notice is that um, we have written the purpose of the different stages in these paragraphs. Now, if you look at the words in yellow, um, we've got so that, to ensure that, where it can be, so that, and in order to be. They are nice little phrases that um, show that we are explaining why a stage is happening. And that is the extra detail that we're adding to these details paragraphs. Um, again, you want to use different phrases 
uh, each time if you can. Um, you do not have to explain why every single stage occurs, um, but the main ones you would definitely want to. So the main stages or what you think are the most important stages, you definitely want to say why you think those things are happening. And normally it's, it's obvious, um, as you can see in this example, uh, milk is stored in the refrigerator to ensure that it stays fresh. Well, that's, that's very obvious. Um, you will always have something obvious to say. Um, the only thing not to do is to make something up um, that is not included on the diagram. So don't say something that is not included on the diagram. Um, so don't say uh, milk is sent um, to the supermarkets um, so that it can be exported to countries around the world. Well, we don't know. We're not shown that they're going to be that the milk is going to be exported to countries around the world. We've just made that up. So uh, don't add in your own information that's not included in the diagrams. Okay, so essentially that is how to um, do a, a process question. Um, we'll have a look at another example as well. Here is the second type of a process question that you might be faced with. Uh, here you get two process diagrams that you need to write about. So the opening statement for this question reads, the diagram below shows the stages and the equipment used in the cement mixing process and how cement is used to produce concrete for building purposes. And as you can see, we've got two process diagrams below. <clears throat> now it's important we don't let ourselves get uh, confused or overwhelmed or panic by the fact that we've got two series diagrams to look at. If you follow the procedure I'm going to show you it's quite straightforward and actually quite simple to do these types of questions. So let's just look at the diagrams first of all. So on the left we've got cement production um, We've got limestone and clay being added um, and they are then crushed. They then go through a mixer. From the mixer these things get uh, heated in a rotating heater and once they've gone through the heater they, they go through a grinder um, to make, a, make the cement, uh, make the powder of the cement. And these are then put in bags. Um, and for the concrete production, we've got cement, water, gravel, and sand um, just being thrown into a big concrete mixer. Um, we've been given the proportions of the sand, cement, and water, and gravel, so the percentages there. And we're told that the concrete mixer will rotate. Uh, in a clockwise direction. Um, so when we look at these it's useful to uh, draw circles around each stage or squares as I have done here. Um, this helps us to identify the different stages. So for the cement production we've got uh, the five stages and concrete production we've got the two stages. And by drawing the circles or boxes it helps us in our minds to break down the diagrams a little bit so it makes it a bit simpler to comment on the different stages. So once we've looked at these and, and feel like we've got an understanding of them, we're going to ask ourselves the exact same questions as we did for the uh, last question which was just one process diagram. So here are the questions again. What happens at the start and the finish? So for cement production, we've got raw materials 
uh, that's the limestone and clay they're converted to bagged cement so that's the start and finish and for the concrete we've got um, raw materials and they end up being machine mixed so we've only got two stages for the concrete production um, natural or man-made well they're both man-made cyclical or linear they're both linear how many steps well on the left we said there's five and on the right we've got two steps and are any raw materials used well yes for cement we've got limestone and clay in there and on the right we've got cement water sand and gravel so once we've answered those questions we are ready to then uh, write our introduction and our overview paragraphs and once again we have used direct synonyms to uh, write our one sentence introduction and this time it reads the illustrations below display the steps and machinery required when processing cement and how concrete is produced using cement for building purposes so we've got uh, diagram illustrations shows display stages steps equipment machinery used in required when cement mixing process processing cement uh, how cement is used to produce concrete how concrete is produced using cement so all of those are direct synonyms apart from the very last one there where we turned the order of words around so how cement is used to produce concrete became how concrete is produced using cement um, so because we flipped the sentence around we had to change the form of the word produced to produced um, so that's another little trick you can use um, so there we go that's our one sentence introduction for this particular process diagram now it's time for the overview paragraph and to write this we'll need the answers to the key features questions that we analyzed at the beginning and basically we can create our overview paragraph using these answers and there are two ways to do it we can write um, sentences that use both of these answers together so we combine both graphs together and write a paragraph or we can write a paragraph where one sentence is about one diagram and another sentence is about the other diagram I'll show you examples of both of those now so here is the first uh, example paragraph and it reads overall both processes are man-made linear with a variety of steps both processes require raw materials to be input and the output is either bagged cement or a concrete mixture so there I have uh, merged um, both diagrams into one overview paragraph so you can do it that way or you can keep them separate as in this example here overall cement production is a linear man-made process which converts raw materials into bagged cement concrete production is also a linear man-made process which produces concrete from raw materials now the approach you decide to use is completely up to you both of them are perfectly logical um, you don't have to include all of the uh, red and green answers uh, you can just pick out the ones that you feel are most relevant or most important and I would choose the paragraph type that you think you can write the most accurately if you think you can write two separate sentences one for each diagram most accurately then do that um, although sometimes if you feel that you want to join them together if there's a lot of commonalities then you can do it the first way it's perfectly up to you both are logical um, 
you just need to be as accurate as possible in your descriptions. Finally, we're going to add the details paragraphs. So here's our introduction and overview paragraph. And it's helpful to have the diagrams to hand here. So uh, we're going to basically talk through the different steps of each diagram and write about the purpose of each step as well, where appropriate. Now there are two diagrams, so it makes sense to write one paragraph about one diagram and one paragraph about the other diagram. And that's exactly what you need to do. And here's the first uh, details paragraph. So cement production begins with the crushing of a limestone and clay so that it can go through the mixer. Next, the mixture goes through a rotating heater before it then enters a grinder which creates the fine cement powder. Finally, the powder is bagged for ease of transportation and storage. And the second details paragraph for concrete production reads, Concrete production starts when cement water, sand and gravel are dropped into a concrete mixer in certain proportions so that the correct consistency can be achieved. The raw materials are subsequently mixed further via the clockwise rotating concrete mixer until it is thoroughly mixed. Now, as I'm sure you'll remember from the first example question, we need to use sequencing words to indicate the different stages of the process. As you can see, these are the words we've got for this one. Uh, so we used begins with, next, before, finally, production starts when, and subsequently, and also until. So nice, easy sequencing words, but there's a variety of them and they're all used in the correct way. And that helps give structure to our paragraphs and our answer. This is what will score you high for um, coherence and cohesion. That's where these um, sequencing words are relevant uh, in the marking process. Um, we also needed to add in um, the purpose of the individual stages. Um, so why do each of the stages happen? Um, and we use words that show purpose, and they were so that, which creates, for ease of, so that, and until. So by using those words, it indicates to the reader that we're providing the purpose of the different stages. Um, notice I didn't give the purpose of every single stage, but I have done for most of them. Um, uh, it's not essential that you talk about every minute uh, detail of the diagrams. Remember, it still is an overview that we're writing, even though they are called details paragraphs. So, um, there we go. That's how to do um, the most difficult type of process question, where you have two diagrams that you need to write about. That is how you do it. Now, there's one more thing I need to mention, and that is the passive voice. In the model answers I've just given you, there are numerous examples of the passive voice. Here, you can see, circled in red, we've got examples of this type of sentence. The passive voice is um, the opposite to the active voice, and the active voice is more common. Um, but we sometimes use the passive voice and we use it when the person that does something is not important. Um, in this case, as we're describing a diagram or a flowchart, the important thing is the activity, not the person who does it. So for this reason, uh, we use the passive voice. So I would pause the video and just read through these sentences and get an idea for the passive voice.
and once again pause the video and just have a read of these sentences in red again these are what we call the passive voice and then in a moment we'll have a look at how to form it and the rules to do so now when i wrote those model answers i didn't consciously think to myself oh i must use the passive voice that is just how I wrote those answers and naturally I ended up using the passive voice so it's not something you have to do but it's something that you should try to do if possible if you feel capable of using this type of grammar the only place where you really have a great opportunity to use it is when you're writing about these processes because the activity and the process is more important than the person that does it so it's a great opportunity to use the passive voice but um, don't worry about writing an entire answer using passive voice um, that's not necessary in fact it's probably better to use a mix of active and passive as this shows really good control of your grammar to the IELTS examiner. So here are the rules for making the passive voice. Um, there are three things we need to do. First we need to move the object of the sentence and make it the subject. Uh, the object thus becomes the subject and then we often exclude the object of the sentence because it, because it is not important to the sentence. Um, that is the doer. They're often not important. We then add in by before the new object if you are including it in the new sentence. Often we just miss off the new object as I did in most of my example sentences in those answers. Then we add the verb to be to the front of the verb and change the verb to the past participle. You then have a passive voice verb. Remember to keep the tense the same. Now often when you read grammar rules like this it just sounds a bit off-putting and a bit complex but when you actually see what it means illustrated it makes far more sense. So here are, here's the f a sentence in active voice. A farmer allows their cows to graze on agricultural land. And changing this into passive voice, we bring cows to the beginning of the sentence, farmer to the end of the sentence, and we add um, the verb to be are and change the verb allow into past participle. And it now reads, Cows are allowed to graze on agricultural land and by a farmer is optional. We'd probably not include it. So that's how you change an active sentence to a passive sentence. As I've said before, this is not an in-depth grammar course. I've just included this um, just as a side note for those of you that are interested in the rules and how to do it. If you want more information and examples about the passive voice, um, there's loads of really good exercises online. Um, so I recommend just Googling it and finding out for yourself some more rules. Um, but that essentially is how to do it. And that will be enough for you to create your own passive voice sentences for these types of diagrams. Let's just finish with a quick run through of some of the key points to remember as you are doing these process questions. Uh, the first one is to, when you first look at the diagram, to identify the starting point and the ending point. Um, sounds obvious, but you just need to be clear on where it starts and where it ends. Uh, secondly, you need to make sure you identify the different stages of the processes. Um, this enables you to be able to talk about each, each stage clearly. You need to think about why each different stage occurs. So what's the purpose of it? Um, that will help you write your details paragraphs. 
and you need to divide the processes into two parts and write your details paragraph um, about each part of the process. However, if you have two process diagrams, then obviously you're going to write one details paragraph for each of the diagrams. And be careful that you do not add in extra information that is not actually shown in the diagrams. Don't add anything, don't add any opinion, don't add any extra information to make um, it easier for you to write. Um, you will lose marks for doing that um, as regards task achievement. Um, just use the information you have been given. And go through the video again um, to recap on the process and try a few questions for yourself and it should uh, become clear and hopefully one of the easier questions for you to tackle.